Yo, what's up everyone? Bren here, and this will be a Life Sealer commentary. So, Life Sealer right now, he definitely isn't a tier 1 hero, guys, but if you pick him correctly versus the right lineups, he can still dominate and just completely take over games, um, which I am going to talk about, because it's actually an insanely important subject um, when you're dealing like, with these like non-tier 1 heroes. Like, he's, like, Life Sealer right now, he's not like a Doom or like a Queen of Pain that you can kind of just pick versus most lineups and get away with it. No, like, you need to pick these type of heroes versus the correct drafts. So, when do you pick Lifestealer? Um, he's really good if the enemy team lacks BKB piercing lockdown, since he just wants to get the most out of his rage ability in both team fights and in terms of, like, controlling the map. Like, you want to actually be able to, to get attacks off in the team fights, guys. Like, if you're picking this hero versus, like, Magnus... Uh, bashing heroes like Troll or Void, especially Void Alt, you're going to have a lot of problems. Um, and if if they have BKB piercing abilities like those, you can't really control the map as well because you can't like push lanes out safely. But if, if the enemy team lacks BKB piercing lockdown guys, you can actually just go kind of crazy in terms of pushing lanes out, moving around the map kind of freely, like against this lineup with Alchemist, Coddle, Undying, Savannah Lion, they have nothing to to stop like a rage TP for example, so I can be really greedy with my positioning this game, um, and he's all and he's also very good versus strength cores just because they have high HP pools and low armor. So feast does a lot of work versus them, um, but do not pick this hero versus um, like high high armor and high physical damage based heroes. So phantom assassin, templar assassin are really hard to deal with. Um, and he's also really bad versus illusion based heroes, so like Phantom Lancer, Lancer or CK. Um, this, now, in terms of this lane, we're going to be kind of having a tri lane against a, an Undying, and he's. We're putting out a lot of harass on him right now. Even if I miss some CS, it's not too big of a deal. Like, if we can get lane dominance against an Undying Coddle lane in the early stage, like, that's what we want to, to try and achieve. I think if A was there right away, we might have been able to kill him, but. They might actually have a ward, so not entirely sure. But at least we managed to push Undying back, and he has to pop his. He had to pop his self, so uh, that's actually really big. Like if you can force a force region out of an Undying really early, and he can't really come up to the wave right now. Like we have creep advantage. We have two archers because of that. What just happened, which means that I can play a little bit aggressively on the wave. Uh, yes, yeah, so we got a pause there, and since we have. And got another pause. It's kind of annoying, but we have two archers. What I want to do here, guys, I want to—I tried to draw aggro right there, but kind of missed it, so I didn't wasn't able to draw aggro and to get that creep. But I'm gonna be picking up an early quilling blade right here, just because. Uh, just because A is pulling. Life Sealer's attack damage is really terrible against, in terms of pre-hitting creeps under tower. So it's really important that you get a quilling blade on him. Um. He's in a really bad damage range for last hit for pre-hitting under tower, and combine that with feast and just creeps having different HP pools at different times. It's it's really hard. So get a crawling blade on him for sure. Whenever you're attacking under tower, now just managed to get a slow on the undying right there. He's kind of just out of position, and we managed to catch him. I think he he thought that A was probably closer towards the easy camp. Same with the the Lena, but you know they were a little bit more. They had a more aggressive stance than he probably thought. Now we're gonna have three archers here, so this is kind of annoying. This will definitely be pushing into them and giving them good exp. Um, I'm gonna deny the lane back, but uh, it's, we have three melee. The enemy team has two, so it's still gonna be pushing into them. And he's decaying me whenever he can. Um, Life Sealer. He's alright versus Undying, but he's not the best. If, if you don't really have supports in lane, Life Sealer is actually really bad versus Undying just because he's going to constantly steal strength. But as the game goes later, Life Sealer becomes really good versus Undying because with the new changes to Tombstone, where it's a, a set amount of attacks to kill it, you can actually just pop your Rage for attacks being attacked. You know? Undying is going on me, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not scared at all. I have open wounds, which... 
re fairly recently got buffed where it, it gives like a flat 50% uh, yeah flat 50% life leech for damage that you do on the enemies now so it's really strong in terms of just uh, sustaining versus heroes that are attacking you so if if Undying man is, wants a man up against me I can pop my open wounds and I can can definitely just sit there and trade efficiently versus him uh, they are playing back right now um, kind of like in my other life server video guys I'm just gonna go for phase this game and just dominate um, you have to like you have to make the decision as well like what item build do you really want to go for do you want to get a Midas early or do you want to get like the phase early just so you can dominate the lane and usually whenever I'm being contested by dual lanes like these I'm I'm just gonna be going for the phase just because I'll be able to get more farm um, if I get the phase that means I can dominate the lane without my supports being near me so that that frees up time for my supports to do things like stacking um, which is farming poles and stuff like that so now I'm just auto attacking this slain it's kinda holding the creep, equi creep equilibrium but we have a catapult and now Undying gets so the, the idea that Undying wanted there guys since it's nighttime he kinda just stuck by the trees and wanted to go towards the secret shop to maybe buy his boots or leech exp or something but as you guys can see we do have a ward in the lane so yeah we managed to see him and catch him out in this game I'm not even going to be going for a Midas which I usually do go for the Midas after my phase boots like you go for the phase boots to dominate the lane free up your supports and then you get the Midas to uh, just give you some gold that you really need like even if you're like really aggressive on lifestealer and it's working out he can still fall behind in terms of farm just because he just can't kill creeps fast enough but the same I'm going to be opting for a really quick drums build and just gonna be getting aggressive just because they really don't have any way to control me like I like I said they don't have any BKB piercing abilities so I think just the quick drums will be really good this game I'm kinda farming the lane right now we still have a ward up, so she probably knows. So he has to be playing. He has to play just really far back. He can't really trade in terms of CS. I should be getting basically every creep and getting a lot, a decent amount of denies against him. <laughs> the DK, his DKs are pretty annoying still. Um, yeah, he still he has, he has ten strength stolen from me. But we're gonna be going on him right here. I pop my open wounds and with the the chilling touch off. We're doing a lot of damage right now. So we're just auto attacking the tombstone down. Walking back to my creeps. <laughs> so, But Lena ends up dying right there so that's unfortunate but still a decent trade. Just to keep on dying down. Just so he can't snowball. With levels. Yep. So I'm getting pretty close to my drums. I'll be buying that up as soon as I get, them, get the gold. And... Oh, another thing guys, even though this is like a good draft to have Lifestealer because they're because of both their offlaner, their supports, I'm Lifestealer is good versus the Lion, the Coddle, decent versus Undying. Um like if I try to play like a farming oriented game, which I think a lot of Lifestealers would be playing in this game, like I'm still gonna be falling very far behind against a Savan and an Alchemist. So what I'm going to be doing, guys, is I'm just going to be going full out on the aggression this game. Even though I still think it's a good draft. And maybe I could have went for just like a farming route. I end up just going for the drums instead of the Midas. Yeah. So I, re I really like going for drums instead of something like a quick Yasha into Sange for the SNY. Well, first we have an engagement right here. I pop in my drums my phase boots. I don't have rage up but I'm still doing a lot of damage at this point now. I'm gonna be popping into this creep just because he's getting out of range and I wanted to kill him right there with the infest bomb but he barely survives. Now we have this alchemist coming at me. I can't like I can probably I probably could have killed the undying right there and it probably would have been the better move just to trade myself immediately right there for him but I end up just running away and paying the price because Alchemist had a haste rune, which is unfortunate. 
I just noticed it too late. Like, if I noticed the haste rune right away, I would have went for the Undying. And at least had a chance of killing him. Rather than what I just did by just walking away. And not being able to get any return kills. So, there's a battle going on bottom. At this point, like, once you get your initial items up, and if you go for a drums phase build, you need to be aggressive on the map. Like, position yourself on the enemy safe lane and, like, in their jungle to control, like, their mids like farming ability. Yeah, so my team is actually doing a pretty good job in terms of this battle without me, but the death was still kind of annoying. Um, obviously the other option guys would have been to TP top and just continue farming the lane, but the thing is Life Sailor can't even really do jungle rotations that well because he, he has no flash farming abilities, um, no AoE outside of Infest. So I'm just gonna be I'm gonna be playing aggressive to to basically just make it so that they get less farm like comparatively to me. So popping my rage and my open wounds on the coddle. He didn't ex they definitely don't expect me to be here right now. Um, I should be able to just catch up and kill this guy though. But no, I'm just gonna be hiding back right here. I'm figured it's kind of too dangerous just because I saw the lion porting in. Kind of just positioning myself around the fight, just be, just in case I can maybe, just in case an opening shows itself, that I can go back in. But <laughs> the Savannah and the Undying just charging the lion, so I'm just running back. Yeah, I'm thinking about going back in. Like that's what I really want to do. Um, low on HP, so I pop my invest into the catapult just to bring myself back to full. And so this stack right here, I can just take this out. It's not really too big of a deal. This will be a huge stack for the, the alchemist. So I dodged the spike. I dodged the lion sun. Not too hard to do. Managed to get him. I'm only down to one drum charger already, guys. Just because I'm being pretty active. Gonna pop my rage again. Just to get more damage out. He's sold right now, so it's a pretty good time to do it. If I can get another slow in this event, Weaver should be able to clean up on him. Oops, I'm gonna get another open wounds on him, attacking him down, and just continuing with my aggression. Like if I if I was top right now, guys, like I wouldn't be able to get much done. The, the Savan probably would be farming decently, and the Alchemist would be farming better. Um, I'm gonna be lowering lowering these creeps over to the hard camp. Or maybe the next wave I do it. Yeah, I'm waiting for the next wave. And then I'm going to be lowering it to lowering them to here. So right here I have the creeps and the neutrals by them, the neutral stack and the enemy creeps are by. Them. So I told Elena to just help me clear them out. So yeah, it's really important that we got the stack. It's really going to slow down the alchemist because even though life sealer, as I was talking about before, guys, even though life sealer is pretty good against alchemists throughout the entire game, if I let him get like a huge farm advantage, which he can easily do. If I'm playing like just a very farm oriented style on Life Sailor, like he can actually just get such a huge advantage, which is like a Radiance, Manta, AC, that I can't really deal with him because I won't have enough items if I try to play a farm game. So that's why I need to be on the aggressive. I'm playing on the enemy side of the map and just maintaining pressure. Kind of like when I play PA and go for uh, just like the battle build, but with Life Stealer. Yeah, actually, that's exactly what it is. Like, PA is PA is better versus like the high armor, high physical damage, like melee or agility core type of heroes, and Life Stealer is not, but he's also much better versus the magic burst heroes, which PA isn't, so they're kinda opposite in that regard in terms of like when you want to pick them uh, versus certain drafts. But you can kind of play them very similarly. Now this game I actually, well, this game I actually am going for a Maelstrom, guys, which I normally don't do, but it is situationally good, and it's going to be really good this game, just because it's going to give me, it's going to give me more lane pressure, like I'll be able to push lanes out, create space, and force rotations from the enemy, and the Maelstrom is going to be building into a Mjolnir, and Mjolnir is really good versus... Radiance burn just because you can put it on your teammate or I can put it on myself and it's gonna proc a lot of times from the the defensive Mjolnir buff 
And obviously, it just does a lot of damage with Life Seal's Rage, just because you attack pretty fast. So, Alchemist has a deed right here. I'm gonna go on him, perhaps force him back. I thought I could have gotten a kill right there, but just didn't have enough damage. Um, I didn't want him to stun me because my, my rage was running out, so I popped in the creep. He ended up stunning himself. So Lion is going to get a blast. So I'm going to pop my rage just so we can't turn around and get the instant hex off. And then yeah, I just managed to pop him right there. So Kyle. Kyle managed to stun me and I'm out of mana. So this is kind of dangerous, but I have my wand. Even the Bassy helps in terms of mana. Oh, this is another thing, guys. I actually started going for uh, Bassy on Lifestealer. Um, just because he... He really wants the armor, and the damage is also nice, but he really wants the armor because a lot of the times you're going to be playing alone by yourself on the map and pushing lanes in with rage, like this game for example, and just having that the extra survivability on the creeps, so they, they tank, your creeps tank more, more tower shots from the enemy, t from the enemy towers, it just helps in terms of uh, putting on lane pressure. So I really do like Bastion this hero. Obviously that means like... I can't have a, I can't have an orb, or an orb in this slot for the slow, so that's kind of annoying. But I think the Bassy is definitely worth it. And I didn't, I didn't really need an orb top, just because we managed to catch them out. They were just dead either way. So yeah, I really like the Bassy. I have Maelstrom in my quick buy. Just pushing this tower down. I'm not really too afraid, as I've said. They don't have any. BKB piercing abilities. So, <laughs> Life Sealer actually was just running at me to try and hex me, but I just popped my rage and he, he can't run if like he's already committed too much distance to me. Uh, yeah. So just ran at him with the bugs on him and we were able to take him out really quickly. Yeah, Life Sealer, I mean, the Alchemist is doing you know, what he can, I guess. Got those two kills. And. And he does not have his Radiance up yet, but I'm telling you guys, if I played a very defensive style, which is a Midas, the Savan would be a lot more farmed, which is annoying, which is really annoying for a Lifestealer. Like, if, if Savan actually gets farm up, you can actually start, like, two-shotting um, Lifestealer. He gets, like, a Daedalus build, Daedalus AC, uh, Savan just starts man-fighting Lifestealer pretty easily, but in the early to mid-game, Lifestealer is pretty good versus Savan. Um, but yeah, if I wasn't aggressive in this game, the Alchemist would have had a lot more farm, and that's unfortunate that Queen of Pain just died there. Quap just gave up 741 gold. It's actually really bad, but... Yeah, if I was playing a lot more defensive, the Alchemist would have gotten his Radiance a lot sooner. Um, I wouldn't have been able to take all that stack. There just wouldn't have been as, as much pressure. So just knowing like where you, where to be on the map is really important, guys. Probably infest for some more damage right there. I managed to get that, that last auto attack off. I decided it's worth it to just kind of just get stunned. Lion stacks his stun on top of the Coddle's mana leak, so he leaks me again. But with my wand, I have enough mana to pop my rage, and I'm just I'm just out of here, guys. Like they just don't have anything to deal with me really on this hero. It's not like they have. Like a winter wyvern or something. Yeah. So I saw the Savan was just charging. You can hear it, and you can obviously see in the see it on the mini map when he uses both his alt and his war cry. So just pop my rage. Couldn't stun me. I have a wand charge coming back up soon. So I am stunned though. Right now. I know the alchemist is behind us because I can hear him. This is kind of annoying, but oh, that was a really good orchid from the Quap. Manages to. Uh, silence the alchemist before he could throw his stun at me. Which definitely would have killed me. Now this... Okay, so Undying just starts manning up on me, which... I guess is reasonable because I was really low, but I am a life stealer, so I just pop my open wounds in combination with my feast, and I'm able to just... to trade with him really well and get a lot of HP, and he just... He, yeah, he, just a bad uh, man up right there from the Undying. Keep him back to base. I probably could have stayed a little bit longer to get more tower damage in, but 
uh, Coddle, so Coddle is coming back soon, so Savan and Life Slayer just doesn't do too much damage against towers, and just structures in general, so. TV back, gonna be picking up my Mjolnir at the secret shop, getting my Hyperstone. God, DD, this is really nice. No, actually, I did not get the DD. I shift queued the DD and then the move, but at that exact time, the Bounty Rune spawned, so. That is unfortunate. Oh, I really want to be getting aggressive on this guy. Use my open wounds. Pop my rage. I have my meal near too, but I'm not popping that yet. But since this TP is about to finish, I do manage to pop it. Just so I get a lot of effectiveness out of like the actual duration in which it lasts. I think I dodged the Coddle Blast there, but I'm not sure. But either way, Fest is really good for dodging abilities like those. The, sh the shitty thing is that we d we really didn't have too much of an initiator this game for me to use infest and to get like really good uh, infest bombs off. Like we didn't have anything like a like a storm spirit, like a Magnus of our own or anything like that. So, uh, yeah. So Coddle, if that if that blast hit me, I would have died. But saw him on the mini map, saw the blast coming, so just pop my rage, dodge it. Definitely have a lot of time to react there, so nothing too insane. Storm of these ancients. Just maintaining an aggressive an aggressive posture on the map. Like, I do not want to be playing on my side at all. Like if someone like if Weaver wants to farm our jungle or Queen of Pain, like that's fine. Like I'm the one that's like creating a lot of space because my hero just kinda dominates their draft. No, I'm just kind of waiting here, guys, because I don't know exactly where they are. Um, they're obviously not farming their jungle because we have decent vision of them. We have decent vision of the jungle. They're not farming any lanes, so like me sitting here isn't like that big of a deal because our, t our my team is farming, and Coddle, uh, he's the unlucky one that uh, goes for the scout, but I just kind of uh, destroy him right there. Yeah. Now my next item is going to be an AC. Ace, I'm going for the AC right now because, first of all, as I've kind of talked in my other Life Slayer video, it's it's probably just just like the best item on Life Slayer to get because uh, the minus armor is really good for your feast. Your feast does really well with attack speed as well, which your AC gives. Life Slayer has low armor, so that helps them out a lot. And most importantly, or maybe not most importantly, but really importantly. Um, it actually gives Life Seer a really good way of going high ground. Um, you can just pop Rage, go up with your AC on, and just hit towers. Like it just gives him high grounding ability. Like, like Basher really wouldn't do much this game. I can already kill heroes extremely fast, and we want to be ending it out as fast as possible against a Savan and a Alchemist draft. Like if Alchemist gets like his Manta and his Octarina up, like this game can extend and they can. And that can lead to enough time for Alchemist to actually get in line. So, line was low, just pop my fast right there. Oops. Did not mean to do that. Yeah. Just pushing the tower at this point. Doing some damage. Kind of just backing off. I'm semi low right now, but. Being low on life sailor isn't really too big of a deal just because if I pop my rage and my open wounds on someone, I can just go back to full HP almost instantly in a team fight. Especially if it's like the correct target. Like if I can get a, get a hold of like the Undying um, or the Alchemist, like I'll just shoot up in terms of HP. Pushing this tower. Lean is, hold Lean is sitting off to the side, which is smart. Got that tower though. And now we're just going to be going for a small high ground push. They definitely have good uh, defensive capabilities, though. With just both acid spray. Uh, Alchemist is actually cutting mid. Uh, we're going on the line right here. Pretty good AA blast right there. Actually, yeah, I don't even... Actually, not really the best blast, but still. Put, pu pushes them away. Yeah, this is a pretty hard team to go high ground against. Just because they have Sven stun. They have the Tombstone, which they can hide in the back. Uh, Acid Spray is good. And the Coddle Blast is really, really strong. 
Like, I really just want to finish my AC. And maybe get an Aegis. Like, if I can get an AC, and either me or Weaver get the Aegis, uh, we can basically just go high ground really easily. Like, you don't want to be rushing stuff like this out. Like, if you're impatient, guys, like, an impatient player might just say, fuck it, fuck it, guys, let's just go high ground anyways. And, like, that can, that can easily lead to a throw. Like, most of the games I play where we're in the lead and that are thrown are usually just from the high ground pushes just because like people are impatient towards uh, just getting Roche but let's go for the safe play send the game out for maybe a few more minutes or whatever um, usually the games will be ending quicker actually if you just get the Roche just because there's not going to be any there's not going to be as much in terms of hero trade so the games are shorter so I took the Aegis instead of the Weaver, just because I'm going to be the one actually hitting the structures, guys. You generally want the, the hero that's going up and get, being really aggressive on the buildings to be the one to hold the Aegis. So there's really no point in Weaver having it. Like, I'm just going to be walking up to the tower and popping my Rage um, anytime, every time, either way. So I have my Illusions pushing in mid, I kind of bring them back just so they stay alive. Uh, they do have my AC aura, so that's really nice. See, Coddle. So, pushing with Life Sailor high ground is pretty simple. Just pop my Rage and attack it. And right, right when the Rage is ending, I just back off. And this is kind of why Life Sailor was... This is one of the reasons why he was really popular for... A very long time just when there wasn't as many BKB piercing abilities like you could go high ground with them really really well after having a good start but obviously if they had like a Magnus they could like RP me and skewer me in and even with the Aegis like they could probably e easily win a team fight so definitely make that you pick life sealer definitely make that you pick make sure that you pick life sealer against say pretty solid draft Right here, Queen of Pain, and Lena are just creating space for me and me and Weaver just get the racks for really. You can't really contest at this point. Um, yeah, this game is basically over though, guys. So as usual, right now I'm just gonna skip towards the end because Savannah's down and Dying is down, so I was lying. I can't really do too much. I'm just going to skip a bit, hopefully to not crash. Nice, no crash. All right, so. Dire victory, and this is just stats because people have been asking for that, so I'm just going to show that. Um, hopefully, you guys uh, enjoyed this video, found it useful. Uh, see you guys later.